Hello. Is anybody there yet? Welcome to Lunchtime Live. I don't see anyone yet, so I'll wait just a couple of minutes. When you arrive, let me know how the sound is. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hi, Donna, how are you? Thanks for the sound check. All right, so my name's Robin and today we are gonna be talking about Sphinx moths. And I am here on a kind of overcast day. Um, it's, not, it's not real warm and it's not really cold. Um, and I am on the main sidewalk that goes to the visitor center. So I'm going to spin this so you guys can kind of see where I am. There's the sidewalk and the visitor center. And behind me, hi Joyce, behind me are some black sage. Now don't be fooled, the black sage has white flowers, but it does have black stems and it's very fragrant. And I'm showing you this because um, a couple of years ago, we had a massive group of sphinx moths here, probably like three or 400 of them. Hi, John. Um, so today we're gonna talk about, hi, Robert. We're gonna talk about the white-lined sphinx moth because that is the kind that, that came to visit us. Um, they live on all the continents in Antarctica and they um, live in a variety of habitats. So um, the, once again, the particular sphinx moth, hi Michelle, that we're talking about is going to be the white-lined sphinx moth. So the genus and the species is gonna be Hyles linata, and it's in the family Spring Sphingidae, and there are 1,200 species in that family. But again, we're gonna talk about the Hyles linata, the white-lined white sphinx moth. Hi, Valeria. Um, so they live in all the continents except Antarctica and they live in a variety of habitats like the desert, the sagebrush, meadows, and your garden. So if you have not seen, if you don't think you've seen this moth, I'm pretty sure you've seen its caterpillar. So I'm going to show you a picture now. That is the caterpillar. If you grow tomatoes or peppers, I'm sure you've seen it. And it's a bit of a pest. It will eat your entire tomato plant in one sitting. They are voracious eaters, but don't squish them because they turn into this beautiful moth. And their job in the ecosystem is to be pollinators and we need pollinators. Um, this caterpillar, as you can see, it's a beautiful lime green. They're pretty cool looking. And it has a horn on its tail. It's not a stinger, it's just a horn and you can pick them up. And if you look at the moth, you'll see why it is called the white lined sphinx moth. It has all these white lines. And it also has this beautiful coral part of its wing. And it's, they've got real thick bodies and they're very streamlined because they're amazing flyers. Their common name is the hummingbird moth, and I'll tell you a little bit about why in just a minute. This, they're, and they have really big eyes, which I'll show you a picture 
in just a minute, uh, more of an up close. And they have these antennas. Now, the females just have regular straight antennas. The males' antennas are longer, and they have like a comb on the antenna. Um, so maybe I should show you right now the other picture of the up close. Look at that. They have huge eyes. And that curled thing is called a proboscis. And the proboscis is their tongue. They have the longest tongue of any moth or butterfly. So that's a, those are some big eyes. Go back to this page. Um, for the most part, the sexes are similar. The only thing different is, is the antenna. Now, you're going to see them pretty much in the morning or evening because they are crepuscular and crepuscular means just that. Um, the food that they eat is nectar and since they are crepuscular, they're attracted to um, plants that bloom in the morning or the evening so those plants here at the estuary would be like the jimson weed. That's that Dactura. It's kind of a big leafed gray bush with the big white flowers on it. Or um, Mirabilis. Mirabilis has beautiful little purple flowers with a long neck. Um, and it's in the four o'clock family, which means that that's when it's blooming around four o'clock. They're also attracted to odorous plants, which is why we saw them here at the black sage, because black sage, especially when it's blooming, is really, really fragrant. Almost stinky, it's so fragrant. Um, if you take another look at the moth, um, oh, let me show you this one more time while we're talking about it. That proboscis, that long tongue. So I told you that they do have the longest tongue of any moth or butterfly. And I'll tell you a little bit about their behavior. The reason that they're called um, a hummingbird moth is because they're similar to hummingbirds. Hummingbirds can, are the only bird that can fly backwards and hummingbirds can pretty much fly any direction that they want to fly. And these moths are similar. They kind of do a shiver to warm up, to take off, and they can fly up to 10 miles an hour, which is, seems pretty fast for a moth. Oh, 12 miles an hour, not 10. And they, they do what the hummingbirds do. They can they can move to the left and move to the right and go up and down. And um, it's called swing hovering or side slipping. And the reason that they have evolved to, to be able to fly like that is to avoid ambush predators. Now an ambush predator is a bug or something that hides deep in the neck of the flower. And so when they stick that long tongue into the flower, the um, ambush bug can get them. I hope it doesn't get them by their tongue. That sounds terrible. Um, so anyway, they've evolved to deal with those ambush predators because they are such spectacular flyers. Um, so when the moths mate, they use pheromones. So it's a certain smell and they use it to attract the male. And here they lay the eggs on the host plant and the eggs are just translucent, flat, smooth, green eggs. You may have seen them. And then they turn into the larva, which is the caterpillar and We've talked about the caterpillar. 
and then it turns into the pupa and they they bury this pupa or chrysalis you'll see it in loose leaves um, loose soil and the they're kind of um, it's it's kind of a hard brown cylindrical shape um, if you garden you may have found some in the dirt they it typically takes about two weeks um, to hatch but if this is late in the season it may wait all winter in the ground and wait and hatch in the in the spring so when it completes its metamorphosis the adult hummingbird moth or sphinx moth will pop out so hey it's really kind of windy sorry um, so these are considered multivoltine, which means that they're capable of producing several generations. And once again, they do form those really massive groups. You might see one or two, you might see them at your house, in your house, but you will also see them in just this huge number. And um, again, they are pollinators and they are important. So when you see one of these hungry caterpillars, don't squish it, just move it. Move it to some kind of a afternoon, morning blooming plant and, uh, you know, or bring them here. All right, well, good luck with your tomatoes and I hope you I hope you get to see one of these sphinx moths before summer is over. Does anybody have any questions? I'm sure there will be a big lag if you do. I may not see it. Um, so, happy pollinator week to everyone. And I hope you have a great day. No questions? I guess not. All right. Thanks everybody, see you next week.